Okay, so I got a question today asking for a review video on how to add fractions with unlike denominators. Okay, so I remember that if I had a fraction with like denominators, for example, if I had one third plus one third, we would know that we would have two thirds because you have the top numbers, but you leave the bottom numbers the same. But if we look over here, we see that we have thirds and halves. And those aren't the same. It's kind of like having apples and oranges. And it's kind of hard to add things that aren't the same when it's fractions. For example, we had two thirds, which would be right here. You would have two out of three. How do you add one half to that? It looks kind of hard like this. Okay, so what you need to do when you're adding fractions with unlike denominators is you need to make the denominators or the bottom numbers match. So what I see here is I have thirds and halves. I'm going to ask myself what number can a 3 and a 2 both become using multiplication? Hmm. Well, I know that 3 can become a 6. I also know that a 2 can become a 6. So I am going to multiply both these numbers to turn them both into 6. Okay? So 3 times what gives you 6? Well, that would be... 3 times 2. And I always say what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Because that is the same as multiplying by one whole. And we know that when you multiply by one anything, it doesn't change the value of the fraction. It just kind of changes what it looks like because that's the identity property of multiplication. So we did 3 times 2 is 6. Now you can do the top. 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 thirds is the same thing as 4 6. We can see that in our picture. We just had 2 thirds. Now I turned it into 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Did I change how much was colored in there? No, I didn't change how much was colored in there. I just changed how many slices were in it. Let's look at 1 half now. Remember, we said that we were changing them both into 6. So 2 times what gives you 6? Well, that would be 3. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do the top, because that's the same as multiplying by one whole. And we don't want to change the value. We just want to change how many slices there are. So when you multiply by one whole, that has the identity property of multiplication. So 1 times 3 is 3. So 1 half is the same thing as 3, 6. We can see that right here. 1, 2, 3 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I didn't change how much was colored in. I just changed how many slices it had. So now I have 4, 6 plus 3, 6. Well, 4, 5, 6, 7, We can do that up here with our picture model, too, and see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And how many pieces are there in one whole? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 6. Okay? Now, if you have keen eyes now, you would know that we were pretty much almost done because we did our addition. But you might say to yourself, hey, that's an improper fraction. We can't leave our answer that way. And you would know that we would have two choices. You would know that we could decompose it into forms of one. So you could pull out six six. And you would say, I have six six, and I'm trying to get to seven six. How many more six could I do? One six. So you would know that your final answer would be one, because six six is the same thing as one whole and one six. 
if you didn't want to decompose, you could also divide it. 6 times what gets you close to 7 without going over? That would be 1. 1 times 6 is 6, and we subtract and get 1. So our answer here would be 1 and 1, 6. The same thing. Remember, the most important part here is that we find out what the two denominators can both become. Because right now when I look at this, I kind of think I have apples and oranges. You got to make them fruit. You got to make them have the same denominator. Okay? So that is how you add fractions with unlike denominators.